Good morning. My name is Dr. Ganesh Taylor, and I'm a scientist who's here to tell you this morning about something called CRISPR. Now, some of you might have heard of this already and be wondering what it is, and I'm hoping that that's why you're here to learn about it. Um, but before I get into the sort of hot and heavy business of the science, I'd really like to start with asking you a question. Do you remember the first ever iPhone? I mean, I know that I certainly do. So back in 2007, the first iPhone dropped. And those of you who remember this moment in time will remember that it completely changed the way that people used phones, right? Mobile phones existed before, but you know, no one had seen anything like the iPhone. This was something that you could do phone calls on, you could take pictures. It had these things called apps. It was wild. Okay, so what's happened since that point? Well, of course, nowadays we all know that uh, the iPhone has evolved. Um, and if you Google something like iPhone evolution, you'll come across this, right? And you can see how over all of the years, it's completely changed. And in fact, quite a few of us, I mean, maybe I'm starting to show my age now, but you know, the latest iPhone, I was just thinking, you know, why can't this just be like the original? The original did exactly what I wanted it to do. So why am I telling you about this? Well, just like the way the iPhone changed the way mobile phones um, were used, how they felt to users and the kinds of capacity that they brought to the table of mobile devices that hadn't been seen before. That's kind of how CRISPR is. So what is CRISPR? CRISPR is something called a genome editing technology, right? And it's a two-parter. So what you can see in this picture is a piece of DNA in blue, and then the sort of two parts, as it were, of the CRISPR section here. So the CRISPR bit is the is the sort of purple and the and the red section and the Cas9, which is the sort of technical uh, full title of this technology, CRISPR Cas9. The Cas9 is the sort of purple blob bit behind it. So it's a two part system, CRISPR Cas9. That kind of makes sense. It has a two part name, genome editing technology. So when people ask what is CRISPR, what they're actually asking is, you know, what is genome editing technology? And genome editing technology is kind of what it says on the can. So it's a type of molecular technology, admittedly, um, that is used to edit the genome. And why did I draw the analogy between iPhones and CRISPR? Well, because types of genome editing technologies had existed before, basically. But when CRISPR came along, it completely changed the way scientists in particular use genome editing technologies to, to edit genomes. So like all cool technologies, CRISPR has evolved, um, evolved in quotation marks. It hasn't sort of done it in the classical biological sense. It's been, it's been done by other scientists. It's been developed like a toolkit. And so you can see here another schematic that I just knocked up that shows how this was the original sort of CRISPR system, which was actually lifted from um, uh, another system. It was used in bacteria classically. Um, and it's used by bacteria to defend against viruses and it has all these multiple parts. And when scientists realized that you could use this to edit genomes, essentially, it started to get sort of polished, refined. And you can see here in the first sort of step of that, these two little separate bits of um, molecule or RNA, if you're interested, um, became uh, basically available to scientists as just a singular strand. So, you know, simplicity, simplifying, making a tool more usable. And since that point, so this is this is the type of technology that most people are talking about when they're talking about CRISPR-Cas9. You buy in this sort of purple strand um, and then you load it into a Cas9. But actually there's loads of other versions these days. So you can see some schematics here. And this is just the sort of tip of the iceberg of variants of this technology that are available. You can have bits attached that will bring in other molecular machines that can either um, light up pieces of DNA of interest, turn them off, turn them on. So that reminds me to say something that I haven't said explicitly so far, which is related to what happened here, right? Implicitly in what I've just been saying is the fact that this purple strand here, the CRISPR part, is that it is programmable. So that is basically what made CRISPR so much better than all the other genome editing technologies. 
before scientists used to just sort of throw molecules at genomes and hope that they would, you know, have the intended effect and check if they had or hadn't. But the point is this CRISPR portion of the CRISPR-Cas9 system is programmable. So you literally as a scientist can just type in the sequence that you want to target and then you can send the Cas9 there, which is great. It's like find and search, search and replace whatever you want to use basically. So that's CRISPR, okay? It's a genome editing technology, it's a two-parter, and one of those two parts is programmable. And that gives scientists the ability to edit genomes in locations with precision that was previously not available before. A bit like how the iPhone changed how we contact other people in our network. So why am I telling you all of this and why does it really matter? Well, um, this slide is just here to remind me to remind you of something that is very underrated, I think, by most people in their day to day lives. So I'd like to take us all right back to, to a really, really important moment in our lives, um, which was fertilization. So I'm, I'm not sure that I can ever get this point across with enough awe um, that I feel about this sort of stuff, but I'm going to try anyway. So this is the moment here, or a schematic representation at least, of the moment where the sperm from your father met the egg of your mother. And what happens in this moment and what this moment represents is one of the sort of most amazing paradigms of biology, realistically speaking, right? Which is the fact that we all started life off as a single cell, okay? Just one cell with one genome in it, okay? Just take a moment there to appreciate that. You, as you are this morning, all the many trillions of cells that you are, that I am essentially, are all derived, all came from this one cell at the very beginning, okay? And this really matters if you think about it in the context of what we were just talking about, okay? So the, the information that is in that genome, that one cell, okay, is the information that tells that one cell divide, grow, make organs become this tall, right? It's going to have brown hair. It's going to have ridiculous brown eyes. It's going to be female in my case, right? All that information is within that genome. And additionally in that genome is information or, or sort of codes that that can inadvertently encode for things that might go wrong in the future. For example, we have diabetes in my family. Likelihood is that I actually have some variants in my DNA that make it more likely that I'm going to end up with diabetes one day, right? All that information is found or stored in the genome of that first ever cell and is propagated through every single cell that has made up my body, makes up my body today and has made up my body throughout all of the 30 odd something years that I've been on planet Earth. So this is kind of like the hymn sheet of the chorus, right? Everyone sings from the same hymn sheet. So that's the biological equivalent. And what that means in terms of CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing technologies is that if you wanted to change the DNA of a cell with precision, you can do that now, right? And if you overlay that onto the fact that all life, every organism starts off as one cell, it means that you have the opportunity to change what that genome looks like at the point at which any embryo is at, at the one cell stage. And that modification will stay within those cells as they develop, okay? So, <laughs> this is my really ridiculous schematic now to remind me to, to sort of now start contextualizing this a little bit further, right? So who really cares about this CRISPR-Cas9 technology? And really, why do any of us properly care about the fact that, you know, we started off life as a single cell? Well, I hope I sort of inspired a bit of awe in you uh, about the fact that, you know, gene don genomes are really important. And it's amazing the fact that we all start off as, as a single cell, but also the fact that there's significance to that, right? So medical significance. So who cares about CRISPR-Cas9? Well, the reality is when the papers came out, what was it, 2014? Um, the people who cared about it most were the scientists, right? People like me in the lab when we first read, when, you know, when I read the paper during my PhD, I was like, whoa, this is going to change things. 
my supervisor the same you know we were all having conversations about this technology and why is that well because to continue watching this video click the link in the top left or in the description below or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas